I know there are a lot of people out there who are very skeptical, but I would strongly advise you to stay away from a Ouija board. I had to learn that lesson the hard way. My story begins when I was 13 years old. I had a very abusive aunt that lived in New Orleans and practiced black magic. Even though she was family, she was very mean and overall a very toxic person to be around. She would beat on my cousins and me and curse at us for no reason. My aunt was into some pretty weird stuff. She owned an antique store in New Orleans and had a living space right underneath it. She had a collection of human skulls and used to adorn them with candles and decorate her apartment with them. They were set up all throughout her home. My grandmother thought she was dangerous and she didn't like when I'd go to visit her. One day, my aunt had a pretty bad stroke and she had to start using a wheelchair. She had a chairlift installed so she could get from her living quarters up to the shop or outside whenever she needed. When Hurricane Katrina was coming, my family tried to get her to come to Georgia to stay with us and be safe, but she wouldn't leave the shop. She said, I ain't afraid of a little bit of water. But when the storm did come, all the power in her building went out, and without power, the chairlift stopped working. She got stuck under the shop when the water rose, and she ended up drowning, still sitting in her wheelchair. Now, here's where the story really begins. My uncle traveled from Georgia down to New Orleans to get the stuff out of the shop once the waters receded. Most of it had been taken by looters, but there were some personal items remaining. When my uncle got back to Georgia, we went through all of her things. I was living with my aunt and uncle there at the time. The house they lived in was on a dirt road in the middle of nowhere. As my cousin and I went through the bags, we ran across my aunt's Ouija board. When she was alive, she used to yell and curse at us if we ever touched it. We didn't know what it was at the time. We assumed it was for kids because it had a bunch of letters and numbers on it. My uncle was a fireman, and one day he had to work the overnight shift. So my cousin and I thought it would be a really good idea to play with the Ouija board when no adult was around to stop us. We read the instructions, and it said that we could communicate with spirits and summon loved ones who had passed over. So I came up with the amazingly brilliant idea of trying to contact our abusive late aunt. We asked the board to summon our aunt so we could talk to her. And right after we said that, the power in the house went out. Now we lived in the middle of nowhere, so it was pitch black because we didn't have any streetlights out our way. We both started screaming and hid under the bed. After we hid, things got unnaturally quiet. I had a cell phone that I'd left in the kitchen. I wanted to call my uncle to come be with us, but I first needed that phone. And it was a pretty big house, so I would have had to walk like a hundred feet in the dark to get it. But my cousin insisted that I go get that phone. I figured if I ran the whole way, it wouldn't be so bad. So I got out from under the bed, and I was getting ready to run to the kitchen, when somebody started knocking on the front door. Now remember, we lived in the middle of nowhere. My cousin said it might be the ice maker, but I said, how can it be the ice maker when the power is out? Then the knocking got louder. Now we both knew it wasn't the ice maker. So my cousin said, Go see who it is. I swear to God I wanted to smack him for that one. At that point, whoever was at the door started banging super loud, like they were trying to break in. I don't know where I got the balls to do it, but I ran to the kitchen to grab my phone, and then I ran to the door and called out, Who is it? And at that moment, the banging stopped. I grabbed my phone and turned on the flashlight. My cousin was now standing behind me, using a swimming pool noodle as a weapon. I was so scared I didn't even take the time to call him a dumbass for that one. We were terrified and went back to hide under the bed. The house was still pitch black, and I was trying to call my uncle, but his phone kept going straight to voicemail. 
My cousin was trying to get my attention, but I told him to shut up. I didn't want whoever was outside to hear us and know where we were hiding. But then, my cousin pointed to the window. There was somebody peeking through the window. A face was pressed right up against the glass, and it was so smushed up that I couldn't make out who or what it was. My heart was beating so fast, I really thought I was going to pass out. My cousin started crying, and I put my hand over his mouth and told him to be quiet. Whoever was at the window was clawing and scratching at it. Then, in the creepiest voice I ever heard, it said, I can see you. I grabbed my cousin by the shirt and pulled him out from under the bed, and we ran to the next room. I didn't look back but I heard screaming and banging coming from the window as we ran. When we got inside the room, I locked the door and we hid inside the closet. My uncle had a rifle in there, but I didn't know how to use it. Then I noticed a breeze in the dark room, and I realized the window was open. I was so scared I literally couldn't move. I knew I had to close that window but I sure didn't want to go near it. I couldn't hear the banging anymore, and I thought maybe whoever it was left. But then my cousin said, maybe they're just moving to this side of the house. And I knew he was right. It could have been that too. So I ran over to the window with the rifle in hand, even though I didn't know how to use it, and I tried to close the window as fast as I could. But it's an old house and the window was stuck, and it took a good amount of strength to close it. My uncle has a large field right in front of the house, and as I struggled to close the window, I noticed there was somebody standing right at the edge of that field. I shined the flashlight out towards the field, but before I could see who it was, they started running towards me at breakneck speed as I was still struggling to close the window. I put down the phone and pointed the shotgun, and I just started pulling the trigger over and over again. But it didn't fire. The person was like ten feet away from me now, and closing in fast. So what did I do? My dumbass threw the rifle out the window at whoever it was, and my cousin and I ran into the living room. So I guess my cousin using the pool noodle as a weapon was not the dumbest thing to take place that night. At that point, I had pretty much accepted the fact that we were both about to die, because I left the window open and gave whoever was menacing us the rifle. I just knew whoever or whatever it was was about to kill us. I told my cousin I loved him and hugged him and said goodbye. Then, in the middle of the hug, I saw lights outside. Headlights! I looked out and there was a huge truck parked in the yard. It was the old white guy who lived on the other side of my uncle's property. He and his wife had come to see if our electricity was out too. The two of us flew out the door to the truck, and we told him everything in about seven seconds flat because we were talking so fast. He told us to stay in the truck with his wife, and he pulled out a gun and went in the house. As a little black kid... I had never been more excited to see an old white guy in my entire life. I then noticed that the window in the room we had just left was now closed. I told his wife that somebody was definitely in the house now because that window was open just moments ago. She started screaming to her husband to get out of the house, but he wasn't answering. So she dialed 911 and had them send every available officer in town out to help us. The old man finally came out and ran back to the truck. We drove over to his house and waited for the police there. After many attempts, I finally got through to my uncle, and he showed up just when the police did. They searched the entire house and found nothing. No sign of a forced entry, no scratches on the windows, no fingerprints, no one hiding inside. The only thing they did find was a lot of water on the floor in the hallway. They asked us if we had been playing in water, and we said no. 
We had no idea where that water came from. We told the police the whole story, but they treated us like we were just two little kids that scared themselves. But I know what I saw. My uncle took us with him to sleep at the fire station that night. And the next morning, my uncle and a few of the other firemen went back to the house. They went inside and got the Ouija board, took it out front, and burned it. My uncle and his wife got a preacher to bless the house, but I still don't like going in there. That was by far the most traumatic thing I've ever been through. I'm 26 now, and I still remember everything that happened that night when I was 13. I really don't want to believe that it was my late aunt who did it all. I know she was mean, but did she really want to kill us? I prefer to think that it was a demon or evil spirit, but I still can't explain why the police found all that water on the floor. Maybe it was her. After all, she did drown, so that would explain the water. I recall talking to my uncle the day after it happened. He said when he found the rifle, the safety was off and it was fully loaded too, which means it should have fired. I still think about it every single day. This happened when I was 16 years old. It was New Year's Eve, and my parents had a party to go to. So my older brother, his girlfriend, and our older sister all came over to ring in the New Year with me. After watching the ball drop on TV, we were kind of looking for things to do. I suggested using the Ouija board. At first, we contacted a spirit that claimed to be named Naomi. My sister remembered that our great-grandmother's middle name had been Naomi, and she went by her middle name. But nothing momentous or scary happened when we spoke to Naomi. After a while, my brother's girlfriend and our sister got tired, and they decided to crash for the night. But my brother and I chose to stay up and play with the board. It was around three in the morning, and at first, we didn't connect to anything. Then the planchette began to move on its own. We asked, Who are you? It spelled out, Eugene. Now, that seemed like a really unlikely and nerdy name for a spirit, so we laughed. We asked it, Why are you contacting us, Eugene? And it spelled out, Afraid. Well, that seemed a bit more serious. So we asked him, Why are you afraid? It replied, Music, 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 over and over again. Then it started pointing to the same three numbers. My brother had the idea to turn on the radio and try to find a station with those call numbers and letters, and to our surprise, there really was a station there. The song Stranded by the group Heart was playing. The board immediately started spelling out, Heart, Afraid, Heart, Afraid, over and over again. I thought my brother was just teasing me. Then it started saying, Don't go, don't leave me, don't go, church, church, afraid, don't go, over and over and over. We assured Eugene that we weren't going anywhere. Then, it just stopped making any sense. And at that point, we decided to leave the board alone and put it away for the night. The next day, the phone rang. Our father picked it up. It was our grandmother calling to say that her brother Eugene, who lived in Arizona and my brother and I had never met, had a heart attack the night before. Apparently, he had flatlined several times and died on the operating table, and they kept bringing him back. My brother and I were just amazed, and we told our dad the entire story when he hung up. A day or two later, my grandmother called to update my dad, and he told her the story. She was absolutely stunned, and she said that when Eugene had regained consciousness, the first thing he said was that he was so afraid for his soul because he hadn't been to church in over 20 years. It was almost as if my brother and I had been some sort of lifeline for him that night. I myself am firmly agnostic. I don't know what's out there, 
but I do know, thanks to this experience, that there is something out there. I've been fascinated by the paranormal ever since. Back in high school, I was over at my friend's house, and her mother was telling us about the building she worked in. The place was supposedly haunted because it was the location of a brutal murder years before. Since her mother worked in the building and had keys, we all decided to go there late one night with a Ouija board and try to contact whatever spirit happened to be there. I had never used one before, so I was a bit skeptical. The building was essentially a large warehouse with tall metal racks that went up to the ceiling. They held large bags of dirt, manure, bark, tools, ceramic pots for plants, and other landscaping things. Think Costco or Home Depot for the landscaping set. The Ouija board we used was glow-in-the-dark, so we kept the lights off in the warehouse for atmosphere. Once we got going, the planchette started moving around all on its own, and I was already freaking out. We asked if somebody was there to let us know, and we heard a loud bang that seemed to come from the rafters on the other side of the warehouse. Every question was met with a similar bang from various locations throughout the warehouse, sometimes close to us and sometimes far away. The final thing we asked was, Do you mean us any harm? But the planchette didn't move, so we repeated the question again, and this time it was followed by the closest, loudest noise that we'd heard yet. It sounded like it was right on top of us, so we decided it was time to leave. As we were rushing out, we flipped on our cell phone flashlights and saw that two large pots had fallen from the racks and a 40-pound bag of bark and dirt had also fallen to the ground. Then we started to hear a slow, low grinding noise, but we didn't know what it was. When my friend's mother returned to work the next day, she discovered that a sledgehammer had been dragged through the dirt and bark that covered the cement floor. The strange part? It was standing straight up in the middle of the debris, and there were drag marks from the sledgehammer, but no footprints anywhere. That experience pretty much made me believe in ghosts, and I slept with the light on for about a week. Two friends and I tried to contact my grandfather with a Ouija board about 15 years ago, but it didn't work, though we did contact a spirit. The planchette started to move around, and the spirit claimed to be my friend's father, who had died a few years before we met her. When she heard that, she let go of the planchette, so it was just me and my other friend manning the board. To verify that it was him, she asked his middle name and birthday, and the board got the information right so we asked if he had something to say to his daughter. He just spelled out the word L-O-V-E. Then the planchette just kept making the infinity symbol again and again. At that point, we called it quits because the girl started crying profusely, so we put the board away. About a week later, I saw my grandfather in a dream. I said to him, I tried to contact you with a Ouija board. He replied, I know, but we decided to let the other guy get through because he had to tell his daughter that he would love her forever. Then I woke up. My first year in college, some friends and I started playing with a homemade Ouija board made of paper. We contacted some spirit whose name I've thankfully forgotten. As we were talking to it, the doorbell rang, and one of our friends had to go because her dad was there to pick her up. After she left, we stopped playing, but we didn't close out the session by saying goodbye to the spirit like you should. We just threw the paper away. A few days later, the girl that left early started acting strangely, and she stopped hanging out with us. Months later, she told us that she had to have a cleansing from a psychic because she wasn't feeling like herself anymore. The moment she stepped through the door, the psychic told her that she had a spirit attached to her, and she used the very same name that was spelled out on the Ouija board months before. 
She told our friend that this spirit was following her because we hadn't closed the session properly. She attempted to cleanse her, but she was never able to get rid of that spirit. Our friend became distraught and ended up dropping out of college and attempted suicide three times. She then moved away to another state and we've lost touch. Ouija boards are no joke, people. I have a Ouija board story that happened to my uncle. He attended a Bible college in the early 1960s in Southern California. My uncle's friend was in the dorm room and two of his fellow classmates were asking the Ouija board questions. It was actually working. They were receiving some pretty intriguing answers to their questions. Then his friend's roommate came home, and the moment he walked through the door, the planchette stopped working, just like that. They kept asking, Hey, where did you go? Why did you stop answering us? And the planchette slowly spelled out, He has the blood of Christ on him. The roommate who had arrived home was a born-again Christian, whereas the others present were, shall we say, just going through the motions of their faith? My uncle's friend was so struck by this experience, he became a true believer. Since this was not my own experience, I can't really vouch for it. But I will say, my uncle is a very serious man, and he's not one to tell tall tales. So this story always stuck with me. While stationed in Germany in the early 2000s, a group of friends and I decided to play the Ouija board in our military barracks. After joking around for a bit, we started to ask more serious questions. We eventually contacted a teenage girl named Cheryl. She told us she was looking for her boyfriend. She said that they died when they were driving back home from a Grateful Dead concert and crashed their car. They both died, but she hadn't been able to find him on the other side. She told us his name and asked if we could find him and get them together again. Eventually, we did make contact with him, and when we asked if he knew Cheryl, he said yes. He said to tell her that he loved her and he regretted not being able to be with her, and he missed her a lot. The final thing he said was tell her I'm sorry. Then he stopped communicating with us. After unsuccessfully trying to get in touch with Cheryl and her boyfriend again, we finally contacted the spirit of an older woman. She seemed really sweet and said she knew Cheryl. When we asked her why she wasn't with her boyfriend, she said, Because Cheryl is in heaven and her boyfriend is in hell. As soon as she said that, all the candles in the room went out at the same time. We all got pretty freaked out and put the board away. We never really talked about it after that night. It's been well over 10 years now, and it still freaks me out every time I think about it. I had a Ouija board, and we used to play with it a lot. The spirit that always came through was named Paul. He said he was 18 years old when he died. Apparently, he died in my hometown in the 1800s, and he said his mother was the one who killed him. He started getting obsessive with me. My initials are KLM, and if anyone else was playing the board and not me, he would just keep pointing to the letters KLM over and over again until I'd talk to him. He told me that his mother was in hell for killing him, and I had to get her out. He said there was a guy named Logan, a priest in the Midwest. He told me that this man was God's helper and that I was the only one on earth that could find this man to give her help to get out of hell. He told me that he would be inside me till the day I died and then we would be together for all eternity. I gave the Ouija board away after that and ever since then, if I'm even near one now, Paul is there asking for me. For the record, I think Paul's full of crap, but I refuse to even be in the same room with the Ouija board now. Right before the new year when I was a sophomore in high school, my best friend and I got out her old Ouija board. 
As she placed the board on the floor between us, she told me with great emphasis a set of rules I was supposed to follow. Like saying out loud, break, before taking my hands off the planchette. She claimed that the spirits that come through the board are very real, so it was important to show respect and follow the rules. But I prided myself on being an atheist with no superstitions. I never knocked on wood, threw salt over my shoulder, or engaged in any superstitious activities at all. So no evil spirits were going to scare me. Confident that my disrespect would secure my place as the most rational 16-year-old in the entire universe, I made a big joke out of the whole thing. To my friend's great concern, I taunted the spirits, denounced the entire activity as dumb, and I went out of my way to ignore all of the rules and formalities, like refusing to say break before taking my fingers off the planchette. When we first placed our hands on it, I was a little startled that it moved without any effort at all on my part. But I shrugged it off, assuming it was my friend moving it. I kept mocking and taunting the spirits, but I was interrupted when the silence of the house was shattered by a loud ringing from the next room. It was the phone. My friend began to freak out, because that phone was a landline, and it hadn't worked in years. She did not answer it. A few weeks later, we decided to play with the board again, but this time at my house. She brought it over, but we never did get around to playing with it, and I just assumed she took it back home with her. Then one night around 3 a.m., I woke up from a deep sleep when I heard a thrashing noise next to my bed. I turned on the lamp, and there on the floor next to my bed was the Ouija board. Now that really scared me. Where had it come from, and how did it get next to my bed? The rest of that year was just awful. I was involved in multiple car accidents, and some other bad stuff happened to me too. But the worst of it is that I was mired in a strange kind of depression. I'd experienced bouts of depression before, but this was different. I was simply unable to be happy, and there was something even darker, a constant feeling of doom. It was a fear that infected me on a visceral level, though a fear of what, I didn't know. I also developed a hateful streak, one that had me saying the nastiest things to people with only the slightest provocation. I wasn't just an unhappy version of myself, it was like I was a different person altogether. For years I maintained that there was nothing to the whole Ouija board thing. Even when I first started to believe in God, I would still roll my eyes at the thought of a Ouija board. I claimed there was nothing dangerous about a game you could buy at the toy store. But then I actually started to read the Bible, and I saw that even in the New Testament, it talks about evil spirits and their powers. Then I looked at world history and began to see evil forces at work, forces with intelligence and purpose behind it. This evil presence is so strong, I wondered how I could have ever overlooked it before. I started learning more about the reality of supernatural forces and the importance of knowing how to distinguish between the good and evil forces. When I thought back on my experience with the Ouija board, I saw that even though it looked like a $20 game, it was still a portal that allowed evil into the world. It doesn't even matter if you believe in them or not, evil spirits can and will come through. In fact, they're hoping you don't believe in them. That way, you aren't being cautious, and it makes it easier for them to enter this world. And maybe even you. When I realized that, I knew I had been the subject of a spiritual attack through my own ignorance of the power of the Ouija board. My mom went to a religious college. She was with some friends one night at a house they rented for spring break. There were about 15 people total. They had just had dinner and were hanging out playing games when somebody brought out a Ouija board. Mom didn't participate, she just sat there and watched them. My mom told me this story many times over the years, and the details have never changed. 
And she's not one to make things up, so I believe this story 100%. Eight of the 15 people were playing. The rest were watching. They were asking a lot of questions, and the planchette was moving around. But with so many people with their fingers on the pointer, she didn't know if one of them was moving it or if it really was a spirit. There was a girl there that my mom didn't know very well, and she was really getting into the Ouija board experience. They knew there were certain things they probably shouldn't ask, but this girl kept asking really specific questions. They started out pretty innocent, but then she started asking questions about demons and wanting to see dead people and know her future. The rest of the people there were starting to get freaked out and wanted her to stop, but this girl refused to stop, and she kept asking questions. She finally agreed to put the board away, if she could ask one final question. She said to the spirit, I want to see you. The rest of the group really freaked out, but before they could move the planchette to goodbye, the planchette moved over to yes, all on its own, in response to her request. Well, everybody there lost it. They said goodbye to the Ouija board and put it away, and then they started playing charades to try to lighten the mood. While they were playing, this girl happened to be sitting closest to the door, and my mom was on the other side of the room facing her. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door, and since it was late at night, they all kind of froze. They were all still a little freaked out, remembering the final request the girl made to see the spirit. After a long pause, the girl got up and went to answer the door. As she opened it, they could all see that the porch light was out, and it hadn't been out earlier. My mom said from where she sat, she could see what looked like a dark shadow person standing on the porch. It was just a shadow. There were no facial features. The next thing my mom knew, this girl fell to the ground, passed out. That's when the shadow disappeared. They called an ambulance, but the girl didn't make it. She died on the way to the hospital. She had a heart attack. At least that's what they were told, that her heart just stopped for no apparent reason. She was an otherwise healthy young college girl. Because of this story, I have never touched a Ouija board, and my mother never did again either. I don't believe for a second that anything good can come from one. The spirit that's speaking through it may seem nice, but that's because they want to throw you off guard. Then they attack. Their end goal is to possess you. Some do it quickly, while others wear you down over a long period of time. But just by playing the game, you're allowing them to speak through you, and you open yourself up to them. The moral of the story? Don't ever play with a Ouija board. And if someone pulls one out, leave the house. Back in college, I met a new friend who claimed she could talk to spirits. I asked her to show me, since I'd been interested in the supernatural for the longest time. She showed me how to create a homemade Ouija board type game by using a piece of paper and a pen. She had me write the word home in the center, yes on the top right corner, no on the top left corner, and goodbye at the bottom. Over the center where I wrote home, we'd hold the pen with the ballpoint facing down so the spirits could use it to answer our questions. Carefully and patiently, we asked the spirit to come through. To my surprise, it actually worked. I asked if it knew my social security number, and it slowly wrote it out on the paper. I continued to play the game over the following weeks. The freakiest thing happened when my boyfriend, friends, and I were in my apartment. I convinced one of my girlfriends to play the paper Ouija game with me. We decided to test its accuracy by asking questions we already had the answer to, and it got him right. While playing, my boyfriend and his friend were looking for their lost car keys. I thought maybe we could use the spirit's help to find them, so I asked where the keys were. It wrote on the paper, Sam, 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 over and over. We were a little confused by that because it had nothing to do with finding car keys. So we asked, Are you trying to tell us your name is Sam? 
the pen went to no on the paper. Then it wrote, Eleven, eleven, eleven. Again we looked at each other confused. Are you trying to tell us you're eleven years old? The pen again went to no. We were both getting pretty frustrated trying to decipher the meaning. Maybe ten minutes passed while we did this. Then my boyfriend and his friend came rushing in the room and said, What did that pen tell you guys? Something about Sam and Eleven? We said yes. They had a look of surprise on their faces and told us to come out to the parking lot. My boyfriend said, You guys won't believe this. I'm a skeptic, but this is crazy. That spirit thing you guys were talking to was right. We found the keys in the car, but check out the license plate of the car parked behind us. We looked, and it was a vanity plate that read, Sam 11. Well, that gave us all chills. Yeah, it worked, but I stopped playing with that game after that. I always thought the stories of Ouija boards were BS, but years ago my mind was changed when I played it with some random people at a get-together. We were talking to all kinds of alleged spirits, and I wasn't taking any of it seriously. Then I thought of a way to test it. I'm Kuwaiti, so I know Arabic. I also knew a young friend of my brother had died recently, so I asked to speak with him. Now, only one person knew me at that get-together, and even they didn't know that much about me. And I was definitely the only one there who could speak Arabic. I was in Oklahoma at the time. So I asked, in Arabic, how my friend's brother had died. And the board spelled out, car crash. I was a bit shocked that they got it right, but I still didn't completely buy it. So I asked again in Arabic, how old he was when he died, and it went to one, then three, and the kid had died at the age of 13. That's when I started really freaking out. No one there could have known those details, let alone have been able to understand my question in Arabic. I asked for more details on the crash, and the board knew he had been thrown from the car. After that, I haven't touched a Ouija board since. When my father was a child, he got a hold of an old Ouija board, and he and his friends were attempting to summon a demon. They all eventually got spooked and threw the Ouija board in the lake. But little did they know, my great-grandmother saw all of this happen, and she retrieved the board from the lake. A few days later, my father and his friends found the Ouija board, warped from the water, sitting on the front porch waiting for them. And they totally lost it. I'm sure my great-grandmother had one hell of a good laugh pulling that prank. I've used a Ouija board with terrifying results. It let something into my home, and I've been physically assaulted by this entity. It all started out with that feeling like you're being watched. Then it progressed to doors opening and closing on their own, and hearing footsteps on the hardwood floors when I was home alone. It then started keeping me awake at night by shaking the bed or pulling the covers off of me as I tried to sleep. Sometimes, whatever it was, would whisper my name. The Ouija board would disappear for days on end, then show up in places I never would have put it. I became obsessed with it. Then... I saw a black mass in the shape of a man standing in the corner of my room. After that, things escalated rather quickly. I had my hair pulled, face slapped, I was scratched, choked, held down, and I had this thing whispering Latin in my ear, saying things I didn't understand. We had to get the house blessed, and it finally went away. I'll never play with one of those boards again, and I suggest you don't either. I played with the Ouija board several times many years ago. I mainly got dark and scary answers from the spirits, 
but still, my friends and I started playing all the time, with a homemade board. A few weeks later, I was in a club, and from across the room I saw a friend I hadn't seen in maybe two years. He saw me and came running over with a strange look on his face. He said, I can't believe it's you. Look, I have something really strange to tell you, and you have to listen to me. I went to see a psychic, and she told me she had a very important message for a friend of mine, and she said your name. She told me to tell you to stop playing with the Ouija board because you're going to get hurt. Does that make any sense to you? I just stood there speechless and really scared. I don't know if that was for real, but I sure as hell never touched a Ouija board again after that. My cousin and I had been playing around with the Ouija board for a few days, but nothing really happened. Then one day my cousin was lying on the couch with the phone in her hand. She stretched out and put her phone on top of the Ouija board that was on the coffee table. The moment that phone touched the board, it started to vibrate, a red light went off, and what sounded like a ton of people screaming and talking in tongues at the same time came out of the phone. It sounded like the phone was hooked up to a speaker system because it was so loud it filled the entire room. We were terrified. It lasted only a few moments, and then the phone shut itself off. We were so freaked out, we threw the board in the garbage and took it down to the curb. The craziest part? Her phone doesn't even have a red light. I went to see a psychic once, and she said, You're thinking about using a Ouija board. Don't. No good will come of it. But I've always had an interest in the paranormal, and I really wanted to use one. So against her advice, one night I went to a neighbor's house and they pulled out a homemade Ouija board. We asked the board if it had a message for me, and it spelled out, Die, bitch. The spirit identified itself as Satan, and it said that I would be murdered. Then the glass we were using as the planchette flew out of our hands and smashed itself against the wall. Not long after this, I was leaving the house and I heard a male voice say behind me, Die, bitch. I turned around to find a man wielding a claw hammer. He hit me in the head twice before I lost consciousness. I awoke in the hospital with a fractured skull. The police never did catch the guy, and while I've never used the Ouija board again, I still live in constant fear that one day I will be murdered like it predicted. One summer, my friends and I conjured up the spirit of a boy named Jake through the Ouija board. My friends kept asking him to prove he was real. We were in the basement of my home, and the board said if we wanted proof that we needed to go upstairs to my bedroom. We all went up there, and we found a box of crayons had been knocked over onto the floor, and a notebook on my bed was opened up. Inside of it, the name Jake was scrawled in big letters using crayon. We had all been together in the basement the entire time, and there was no one else at home. We all got really scared, and somebody said we needed to break the board into pieces to stop the evil. So we did. That was the last time I ever messed around with a Ouija board. A close friend and I used a Ouija board a handful of times over the last few years. Every time we played, the spirit we were speaking to claimed its name was Allison. A good friend of ours named Allison committed suicide eight years ago, so we assumed it was her. Most of the time talking to her, the vibe was good and nothing weird happened. But one night we were playing and suddenly the mood changed. Things became eerie and something didn't feel right. We both sensed it, and we asked if Allison was still with us. And the board said no. We decided to stop playing when the planchette started moving so fast it almost flew out of our hands and off the board. We said goodbye to whatever it was that we let in, 
and as soon as we did that, the eerie dark feeling went away. My sister and I used the Ouija board a few times when we were teenagers. Every time we used the board, we seemed to communicate with the same spirit. His name was Ed, and Ed would constantly threaten our little brother during the sessions, even though our brother, who was five years old at the time, wasn't playing and he was nowhere near us. It scared us so much that we threw the board away. We never mentioned a word of this to our brother, but years later, as a teenager himself, our brother brought home a friend's Ouija board. After he and his friend used the board a few times, he told us that he was a little freaked out by it because the spirit of somebody named Ed kept threatening him. This happened to my best friend when she was a teenager. She and a few of her friends took the Ouija board to an old church one night. Two of the people there, John and Linda, had dated but then were broken up. My friend sat down next to Linda to use the board. Everyone else just sat there and watched. Before long, they made contact with something and started asking questions. At one point, my friend asked the spirit, Who here do you love the most? The planchette pointed to Linda. She then asked it who it hated the most, and it pointed to John. Well, he got mad thinking that Linda and my friend were messing with him, so he started to walk away. As he did, the planchette pulled away from the girl's hands and the entire board turned to keep pointing towards John as he walked away. Now, this was not a flimsy, cheap board either. It was an old, heavy wooden one, and it required some effort to move smoothly. To test it out, they had John walk in a circle around the board. And sure enough, it turned in a complete 360-degree circle, always pointing to him, with no one touching it. Well, they all noped it out of there, and they never touched a Ouija board again. One time my friends and I brought a Ouija board to a very old cemetery, and we were able to contact one of the women buried there. Normally I would have suspected it was one of my friends moving the planchette. But here's what happened. You decide for yourself. This cemetery is way out in the country, so there's no lighting, and the moon wasn't full enough to illuminate anything. Our flashlights were the only source of light. We walked through the cemetery, set up the board in a clearing, and started asking questions. At first nothing happened, but soon the planchette started to move. We asked who was there, and it spelled out the name, Eliza. I was still very skeptical and wondering which one of these jokers was moving the planchette. Someone asked how old Eliza was when she died, and the board pointed to 5-4. We asked if she wanted us to stay with her, and she said yes. Then one of my friends started shining his flashlight on the gravestones around us. One of the stones closest to us read, Eliza Taylor, 1862 to 1916. Well, we freaked out and hightailed it right out of there. A few days later, I googled that cemetery, and I found that some people have reported seeing a lady in period dress beckoning them over to a grave. We think it was this Eliza woman. Very creepy. A few years ago, my mom and I decided to make our own Ouija board out of paper and an overturned glass. We started asking the standard questions like, Is someone there? Yes. Are you alone? Yes. Do we know you? No. Then we asked, Are you human? No. Well, we packed it up pretty quickly after that. I did the best spiritual cleansing I knew how, but after a few weeks of very weird things happening in the apartment, we finally called a medicine man in to cleanse the home properly. Needless to say, we never tried that again.
When I was in high school, two of my friends, who were sisters, decided it would be fun to play the Ouija board. At first, nothing happened. Then, all of a sudden, a door slammed shut, loudly. I assumed it was the wind, and we even joked about it. I went over to open the door again, but it wouldn't open. It felt like it was vibrating, which freaked us all out. We were banging on it and turning the knob, but to no avail. I almost fell down because I was throwing my entire body weight against it when it randomly opened, all on its own. Well, we were terrified and tried pushing the planchette to goodbye, but the board said no. The younger sister then grabbed the board and burned it in the trash barrel outside. After that, we tried to calm down and go to bed, but the next day, we were looking for other board games to play in the closet when we noticed a weird smell. We looked down and saw the Ouija board, charred and covered with ash, sitting on the closet floor. It freaked us out and I left and never went back to their house again. For a long time after that, I had a feeling like I was never alone, as if something followed me home that night and never left. When I was younger, I talked a friend into playing the Ouija board with me when she spent the night. We set it up on my bed, and she was already scared before we even began. At first we didn't get anything, because she kept taking her hands off the planchette. But after trying to calm her down, the planchette spelled out, Hi. Well, that was enough for her, and she wanted to stop right then and there, but I talked her into continuing. We asked the spirit's name, but the planchette went to no. I asked a few more times, but each time the planchette went to no. Then my friend said she really wasn't going to play anymore and took her hands off the planchette again. And when she did, my bed started to shake. The intensity of the shaking almost knocked me over. My friend started crying and yelling at me for being so mean. She thought I was doing it. The bed only shook for maybe ten seconds at most, but as soon as it was done, she demanded that I open the door so she could jump out of my room. She was so afraid, she didn't even want her feet to touch the floor. So I opened the door and she jumped out of my room and basically ran three blocks home at two in the morning. She never came back over after that night, and we really didn't stay friends. About ten years later, she sent me a message on Facebook, asking if I remembered that incident. Then she asked me why I was so mean to her that night. She still thought I had done it. But I wasn't the one doing that. I thought maybe it was an earthquake, but we live in North Texas and we don't have earthquakes. And I'm pretty sure my bed was the only thing moving that night. I've used a Ouija board multiple times. I did a lot of research and I know how to do it without putting myself into too much danger. The very first time I played, I made my own out of cardboard. It was super pathetic. If I were a spirit, I'd have been a little offended. A bunch of us went to one of their family's empty rental properties to use the board. Their tenant had just moved out because he claimed that the house was haunted. As a huge fan of all things paranormal, I was thrilled to be asked to help investigate. We were all 15 years old at the time. I went well prepared. I poured salt in a giant circle in the living room and made that our home base. I brought knives, flashlights, and a ton of extra batteries. We then went to the room that I felt was the most haunted, and my friend confirmed that was the room where the tenant had seen things the most. One of my friends, Pedro, a devout Catholic, stood in the corner watching and recording in absolute horror. We asked in Spanish, since we live in Mexico, if there was a spirit there that wanted to have a conversation with us. At first nothing happened. Then the planchette started moving, just slightly. We couldn't tell if it was one of us doing it or not. But then it began to move for real. Slowly, cardboard catching against cardboard, we watched in silence, not daring to breathe, until it landed on... Yes. No way, Pedro whispered. 
Another friend laughed nervously. I had to remind her not to remove her hands from the planchette. Are you a woman? she asked the spirit. It went to yes. What's your name? The cardboard slid to G, then O. Are those your initials? It went to no. Do you mean you want us to go, as in you want us to leave you alone? The planchette slid over to yes. Well, we didn't need to be told twice. We bid the girl goodbye and quickly left the room. But the whole thing was just amazing to me. My most exciting time using the board was just a few weeks ago at a party. What started out as the most in-depth conversation with the spirit so far ended up really scaring us. The Ouija board we used this time was not made of cardboard, but one that you could buy in the store. It was a lot bigger than mine, which was good because there were a lot more people playing that night. We contacted a few spirits, including a 14-year-old boy who said he'd drown, someone who popped in to say hello then quickly left, and quite possibly a demon, who we immediately said goodbye to then cleansed the room afterwards. My friend Maria said, Let's try one more time. We once again started the game in Spanish, but this time the answers from the spirit we contacted didn't make any sense. Would you rather we spoke in English, she asked. The planchette went to yes, so we switched to English. The spirit said he was a man, 41 years old, and died in 1952. When we asked his name, he said to just call him D, but he made it clear that that was not his real name. He said he'd been shot dead by a gun in Maria's building, but not in her apartment. He said he was Canadian, but lived in Mexico at the time. What brought you down here? I asked. He spelled out W-O-R-K. Oh, what was your work? He slowly spelled out S E X. We all just looked at one another. Finally, Pedro asked, Were you a pimp? The planchette moved over to yes. Wow, here we were talking to a dead Canadian pimp from the 1950s. We asked if he thought it was wrong and if he felt sorry for doing that and he basically said that he thought women were expendable. My Catholic friend Pedro, being a good guy, started lecturing Dee on how coercing young women into sex work wasn't moral, and the planchette, without any prompting from us, began moving very quickly, spelling out, Shut up, shut up, shut up. That's right, folks. A ghost told my friend to shut up. We asked Dee if he liked Pedro, and the planchette quickly shot over to no. Then Sophia, a very sweet girl who had been afraid to play the Ouija board to begin with, asked Dee if he liked her. He quickly said, yes. She was touched, until we reminded her that Dee was a 41-year-old pimp, and she was a pretty teenage girl. She quickly changed her mind. We asked Dee if he had been killed because of his job. Yes. We asked if he was lonely in the afterlife. No. We asked if he had friends over there. No. Enemies? Yes. We asked if the person that killed him was there in the spirit world with him. Yes. Hmm. Sucks to be him. It was time for a break, so we bid Dee farewell. A few hours later, it was just me, Maria, and another friend, Pharrell, remaining. We decided to play one more round before Pharrell and I had to go home. We once again connected with Dee. Are you the same Dee from earlier? Pharrell asked. Yes. I asked him where he grew up. I don't know. 
You don't know where you grew up? No. Did you forget? Yes. Do you remember your parents? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it hard to remember things in the afterlife? Yes. What do you remember? Wife. The three of us collectively said, Ah, to that one. What was her name? I don't know. He also said he had two kids, a boy and a girl, and he claimed he didn't remember their names either. Frankly, I think he was lying about not remembering things. This is where things began to get scary. We'd been talking for a while now, and it was late, and we'd exhausted most topics, so Maria decided to ask, Is there anything you want to talk to us about? The planchette slowly spelled out, L-I-F-E. Do you want us to help you remember your life? I asked. Yes. How can we do that? L E T M E O U T. It dawned on us that D wanted out. My friends and I looked at each other, worried. Sorry, D, I told him. We can't let you out. It's one of the most important rules of playing the Ouija. Never invite a spirit into the world of the living, no matter what. We can't do that, I said again. Yes, he replied forcefully. Maria backed me up. We can't let you out. I'm sorry. O-U-T... N-O-W, came the reply. We were done at that point. Shaken, we said, We're going to say goodbye now, D, but it's been really great meeting you. The planchette nearly flew out of our hands and moved over to, No. Yes, we said, We're going to say goodbye now. We all forced the planchette over to goodbye. Shaking, we ended the session and cleansed the room. It was freaky, but by far the most interesting experience I've ever had in my life. Now before anyone says, how do you know that it wasn't one of your friends moving the planchette? I have two reasons. First, I trust my friends. And second, I've played the Ouija board when somebody was moving it. You can feel the pressure being placed on it, and you can tell where it's coming from. Conversely, I can also tell when it's not being moved by one of us. Anyway, the Ouija board is a very fascinating tool. I've had lots of cool experiences with it. But if you plan to use it, do your homework and stay safe. I was in a bad marriage, being physically abused, and I was feeling suicidal. My husband was on a trip, and I was staying with my friend Sharon. I had this weird feeling that I needed to have her take me to buy a Ouija board. I don't know why, but I just had to have one. We started using it, and it said that it had a message for me from my mother. She committed suicide when I was 21. The planchette spelled out, Stop killing yourself. I love you. I hadn't told anybody that I felt that way. That made me take a good look at my life, and it gave me the courage to leave that man. The message that came through made me feel warm inside, but at the same time it kind of freaked me out, so I threw the board away. I never touched a Ouija board again. I didn't need to. I heard what I needed to hear already. I went to a haunted house with a few friends. We spent the night there and played with the Ouija board to see if we could communicate with a spirit. Sometime in the early evening, 
We contacted a girl that said she had died of cholera in the house back in the 1800s. We asked her to show herself, and the planchette pointed to 11.35. Fast forward to 11.35 p.m. We were all together sitting there anxiously waiting to see what would happen. 11.35 came and went, and nothing happened, so we all relaxed. But five minutes later, my friend said he saw a girl looking in the window. The lights began to flicker on and off, and we heard a loud knocking on the door, and no one was there when we opened it. It was all very frightening. After it was over, we pulled out the Ouija board again, and the girl confirmed that she had been the one doing it. The next morning, we found several notes that said, Come back soon handwritten on torn pieces of paper scattered throughout the house. We still can't explain it. I moved to a haunted apartment about ten years ago. There wasn't a lot of activity at first. At most, there was a back bedroom that nobody wanted to go into. That was my bedroom. But I couldn't get comfortable there no matter what I did. So now I sleep in the living room to this day. One of the first things that happened was that I woke up in the middle of the night and it looked like the apartment was on fire. The smoke detector was going off and the place was filled with smoke. I could even see the orange flickering light of fire that seemed to be coming from somewhere on the first floor of the building. I got up to run out and just like that, everything was gone. No fire, no smoke. I went looking around the apartment to see what made me think that something was on fire, but there was nothing. Then came the strange singing. It always sounded like it was coming from the back bedroom. It was a woman's voice, and it sounded like a lullaby, like she was singing to a baby. This would manifest at random times during the day or night. The first time it happened, I went to check to see if there were radios or TVs on, but there weren't. I even looked outside, but there was no music at all. The next thing was a visual manifestation. I was in the living room writing late at night, and I got up to go get something to drink in the kitchen. Upon returning, I found an old man standing in the living room. At first I thought maybe the guy was lost and he came into the wrong apartment. He didn't look mad or angry, but very unhappy, like he was disappointed. Confused, I asked him, Uh, are you in the right place? Can I help you? And just like that, he vanished. He dissolved right before my eyes. That was the one and only time I saw that particular apparition. And looking back, it makes me wonder if he was warning me about the next apparition. She told me her name was Rose. When I was sleeping, I had these strange moments where it felt like there was a woman walking around the apartment. I chalked it up to sleep paralysis at first, but she kept coming back. She didn't seem malevolent, but lonely. She'd come lie next to me and hold me, but that escalated over time. At the beginning, she'd be there every night, to the point where I started sleeping with the lights on. I wasn't exactly afraid of her at first but it was a little unnerving. She would only show up during that weird twilight time between being awake and going to sleep. That's the only time I could see and communicate with her. It wasn't sleep paralysis because I could still move and talk, but soon the encounters became terrifying. One of the worst started off with her holding and hugging me in bed as usual, but then she got on top of me and held me down while hissing in my ear. I couldn't understand what she was saying. It was in a language that I couldn't identify. But the feeling she gave off was pure evil. It felt like a dream, but I was fully awake. I fought to get her off of me, and for a second I was able to sit up, and she disappeared. I breathed a sigh of relief and put my head back down on the pillow. But the moment my head hit that pillow, she was right back on top of me, holding me down and hissing in my ear again. After I sat up a second time and she was gone, I did not lay down again that night. This went on for a long time, 
but eventually I adopted a cat, and since I got him, Rose has barely been around. I think the last time I saw her was about three years ago. Researching this manifestation, I came to believe that Rose wasn't a ghost, but a succubus, and cats are supposed to help you ward off evil spirits. I didn't know that at the time, so I guess I just got really lucky when I decided to take in a cat. Things have really calmed down in the apartment since he came. The only things that have happened are small stuff, like I'll still hear the singing from time to time, and the other day, a knife flew off the table without me or the cat being anywhere near it. And a few months ago, I found a Ouija board downstairs in the middle of the floor. I'd never seen it before. It appeared out of nowhere. No one else lives in the building right now, just me and my cat. I also discovered by asking around that an old man died in that back bedroom. But I will not be using that Ouija board to contact him. A Ouija board told me that my husband was cheating on me with his ex-wife, D, without me even asking. Three months later, we were divorced, because it was right. At the time, my husband was away for training. The friend I was playing the Ouija board with got scared after it told me that and didn't want it in her house, so I put it in my car. A few nights later, I picked up my husband at the airport and he wanted to know what the Ouija board was doing in the car. I told him it freaked my friend out, so I took it for her. And, oh, by the way, it told me you were sleeping with Dee when you were gone. I should mention that Dee, his ex-wife, lived a couple of states away and I was taking care of their two young children because my husband and I had custody. After I told him what the board said, he just lost it. He flipped out about having the board in the car, going on and on saying it was evil and told lies, blah, blah, blah. His reaction was so over the top, he was obviously lying and trying to deflect. But I didn't get upset. In fact, I didn't react at all, and I think he realized that I knew he was guilty. To make matters worse, when he was gone, my three-year-old stepdaughter got very ill and I had to take her to the ER. I tried calling him, but he never answered. It just went to voicemail. I kept calling, trying to tell him she was in the hospital. When he finally called me back, he told me he'd been in class and then went to a late dinner with his classmates. I believed him at the time. But two nights later, the board told me he was actually in bed with his ex-wife when I was calling. Anyway, I waited a few days, then I straight out asked him, Were you or were you not with D when I was taking your daughter to the hospital? He just hung his head. I have never felt so disrespected in my entire life. He apologized and begged me to stay. And honestly, I couldn't face leaving those kids. I loved them so much. But three months later, I couldn't balance my love for them against the pain I got from him. So I told him it was over. Walking away from those kids was so much harder than leaving him. The funny thing is, if you would have asked me before if he would ever do something like that, I would have laughed and said no. He was that sneaky and charming. Maybe I was blinded by love, or maybe I was just stupid, because I didn't suspect a thing. But I must have known on some level, because when the board told me, I knew it was true right away. The spirit of a little girl followed me around for years at a house I lived in until I was 13. She started showing up after my Nana died. There was always something weird going on around my Nana, and I spent a lot of time at her house. She would leave a chair at the back door because she said a male spirit would sit there at night. I actually saw him a couple of times, but I never felt that he had any malicious intent. But sometimes when I'd spend the night... I'd wake up and I'd find the dolls she kept on the dresser, all six of them, turning their heads from side to side. 
and a couple of times, I woke up in different parts of the house, and I do not sleepwalk. When my family was house hunting, the first thing I noticed when walking through the one we ended up buying was that all the mirrors were turned around. I asked the realtor lady why. She said the previous owner had done that, but she didn't say why. That same homeowner had fallen down the stairs and was hospitalized. I don't know why, but it made me think that it all had to do with the house being haunted. Not long after we moved in, I was taking a nap when I got the sudden urge to grab my phone and take a picture of the room. Lo and behold, the photo showed the spirit of a little girl right there in the room with me. I was stunned. She had long black hair that covered her face, and her blue clothes were tattered and dirty. I showed the photo to my parents. Dad said it was nothing, and Mom wouldn't even look at it. That's when things in the house began to get really scary and heavy. It started in my five-year-old brother's room. He had a TV that would turn on by itself at full volume, but only with white static noise being heard. This happened a few times before we got rid of it. Then Dad told us he woke up one night when he felt someone grab his hand. Thinking it was my little brother, he opened his eyes. After he realized that it wasn't my brother, he tried to pull away when something powerful clamped down on his hand and wouldn't let go. The only time I've ever seen fear in my father's face was when he recounted that story. Twice I had a friend over, two different friends on two different days, and both fell into a trance-like state. They each blanked out and started walking towards the back bedrooms of the house. I had to shake them both back to their senses, and when I asked what they were doing, they both said they didn't know. Another time I had a small group of friends in the living room with me, when that TV turned itself on at full volume too. I got up and went over to turn it off, when I heard loud footsteps coming down the hall from the bedrooms. We all froze and waited, our eyes fixed on that hallway, as the footsteps came closer and closer. Just as they were about to round the corner into the living room, my dad walked in through the front door. Everything went silent and the air lifted, but everyone was already so badly scared that they all went home after that. Not knowing what to do, I asked a good friend of mine whose sister was into the paranormal stuff. She said we should try a Ouija board. But I was raised in a very religious household, and we were taught that playing with the Ouija board was pretty much damning yourself. But she offered to do it outside in a park nearby, and said I wouldn't even have to touch it. I thought that was a pretty good deal, so I accepted. That night we went to the park around 9.30 p.m., they set up a board and asked if there was a spirit there. We did this for about five minutes with no reply, so they asked me if I would just touch the planchette to establish a connection with whatever spirit was following me. I hesitated, but I finally laid my fingers on the planchette. And this time, when they started asking questions, the answers came quickly. I won't get into all the specifics, it would take too long, but the spirit told me it was good and that it was protecting me. But then, all of a sudden, it started spelling a word that we didn't understand. C-U-L-S-E. Three times in a row. Just then, a police car pulled up. We said goodbye to the spirit as the cop walked towards us. He asked what we were still doing in the park. Apparently it closed at 10 o'clock and it was well past that time. We apologized and started packing things up, but something made me turn and read the name tag of the officer, and it read, CULS, C-U-L-S-E. I pointed it out to my friends, and then we gave the officer a summary of everything that happened that night, but he didn't believe us. It really shakes me up to think of all the paranormal things that I've experienced in my life, but I think the craziest one would have to be what happened with the Ouija board itself. Never again.
My good friend in high school had a Ouija board, and we messed around with it a lot. We'd ask the basic questions like, What's your name? Who are you? Where do you come from? It was all fun and games, until my friend started complaining of weird things taking place in her house. She was Catholic, and her mom had crosses hanging over most of the doors in their house. Then they came home one day and found all of the crosses hanging upside down over the doors. My friend got scared and told her mom what we'd been doing. Her mom called the parish priest and he came over and blessed the house. After that, all the weird stuff stopped. Also, her mom got rid of that Ouija board. Years ago, my daughter and I were playing with a spirit board on Halloween. A spirit came through that referred to me as Dolly Girl, my mother's pet name for me. Mom died in 1980. I asked Mom if she had any message for my sister, and she said, Tell her I like the round table. Now, I found that kind of odd because my sister did not own a round table, but I called her to relay the message anyway. My sister went quiet, then let out a little nervous laugh. She told me, Billy and I were out looking for a replacement table for the kitchen today. We found one we liked and bought it. It's round. It's kind of nice knowing that Mom is still hanging around. I bought a Ouija board from a yard sale. Very bad decision. My mom was so mad that I brought one into the house that she made me keep it under the couch in the basement where I spend most of my free time. One day in the basement, I lost my cell phone. I used my sister's phone to call it because I always keep the ringer on. I dialed, but nothing. I looked everywhere. I even looked under the couch cushions. Nothing. Five minutes after I stopped looking, I heard my phone ring. The sound was coming from the couch. I lifted up the cushions, and there it was, right in the exact same place I had just searched a minute before. On a trip back to the islands for my grandfather's funeral, my older brother and sister, our pregnant cousin and I, decided to try to contact our dead grandfather. Now people on the islands are very superstitious, so no one had a Ouija board. We had to make our own out of cardboard and a magnifying glass. That night after the funeral, we went down to the beach behind my grandmother's house and tried to contact a spirit or two. None of us really believed we could actually do it. At first we were just messing around, asking to talk to Elvis or Michael Jackson. But then we got serious and asked to speak to our grandfather. That's when things started to feel eerie as hell. The magnifying glass started to move, but before it could spell anything, my grandmother came running down the hill yelling, What have you done? What have you done? She started hitting us and destroyed the board. The next day, my cousin had a miscarriage. Now I'm not sure if it was just a coincidence or not, but I don't mess around with the Ouija board anymore. At 17, a couple of friends and I were playing with the Ouija board in the cemetery at midnight. Nothing was happening, and my friend became frustrated. He started yelling insults into the air, trying to provoke a response from the spirits. I didn't want the others to think I was afraid, so I joined in. When still nothing happened, we decided to pack up and go home. We'd all driven there together in my friend's brand new truck that he'd bought just two days earlier. We got in the truck, and the keys weren't even in the ignition yet, when all of a sudden the truck lights turned on, then off, then came back on at half power. Then the radio turned itself on and off several times before it started up again and started to blare static at full volume. Then it went off, and everything was quiet. They all laughed and thought it was funny. Then my friend put the key in the ignition and we all drove home. It was so weird that they laughed at it and thought nothing of it, because I didn't sleep at all that night.
When I was 14 or 15, my best friend and I got a Ouija board. We started talking to a spirit that called herself Mama. Mama answered all of our silly questions for a while, like, who has a crush on me? Who will I marry? How many kids will we have? Stupid teenage girl questions. But after a while, Mama turned mean, and she started calling us bitches. This was really upsetting because we were Mormons. Then she made the planchette do a figure eight crazy fast over and over again. So we put the board away. But after that, any time we played with the board, Mama would take over, no matter what spirit we were talking to. She'd make the planchette spell out, Mama, 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 and do that figure eight thing. And she'd be calling us names the entire time. After a while, we decided it was time for her to go. We read online about how to exercise an evil spirit from a Ouija board. It called for all sorts of things, including a juniper candle. But we settled on a Bath and Body Works strawberry-scented candle, because that's what we had on hand. We also brought a Bible, the Book of Mormon, and a framed picture of the head of the Mormon church, for good measure. We placed the board on top of the Bible and the Book of Mormon, lit the candle, and had the picture of the head of the church looking on solemnly. We started reading some silly incantation that we found online, and looking back, it was just mumbo-jumbo. But man, did it piss Mama off from the get-go. The planchette started spelling out, Mama, 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 Mama. So fast it almost flew off the board. Then she started cursing and moving the planchette in that figure-eight motion, so fast and hard, it looked like she was trying to dig a hole. Then the overhead light bulb exploded. I can't explain this, but the moment that broken glass hit the board, the planchette stopped, and it all went quiet. Maybe it was just an electrical surge, but I haven't touched a Ouija board since. My first experience with a Ouija board came when I was 21 years old. The entire night, we'd gotten different responses from various spirits. We got a lot of correct answers, but just as many inaccurate ones. Like they'd tell us something we knew to be true, but they'd use the wrong date or spell the name wrong. It wasn't until one of the spirits claimed to actually know me that things got weird. When I was a child, I watched a friend of mine beat his dog nearly to death, then poison it. I was too afraid of him to stop it, so I simply watched as he killed the poor animal. Fast forward to that night with the Ouija board. A spirit that came through claimed I murdered it. I was really confused, and I asked who it was and when they died, but I got no reply. Then I had a thought, and I asked if it was human. The planchette went to no. I asked its name and it spelled out the dog's name that my friend had killed. I thought my friends were messing with me at first, but then I remembered that none of them knew that story. That was enough for me to believe that Ouija boards are real. I live in Wyoming, surrounded by forest. My brother and cousins knew of a supposedly haunted shed in the middle of the forest and they told me stories of being chased away by a dark figure. Well, I wanted to see that for myself, so my brother and I went out to the shed one night and went inside. We sat down with a Ouija board in between us, and we started asking if anyone was there willing to talk to us. The planchette shot over to, Yes. Excited, I started asking, What's your name? Where are you from? How long have you been here? But no matter what I asked, it would only reply with a yes or a no. Then I asked, Are you a demon? And it actually spelled out, Behind you. Right after that, we heard a loud pounding on the wall near the door. We looked over, and standing in the doorway was a tall black shadow figure, the one they'd told me about. It was just standing there, staring us down. 
Unfortunately, there was only one way out of there, and that was through the door. So we both booked it right past the figure and ran home. Two days later, we went back there with our cousins, and the shed was gone. There was just a big empty space where it used to be. The whole experience was scary as hell. My grandma had a fire in her basement. All the board games, including the Ouija board, were stored underneath the sofa down there. Everything got burned to a crisp, but the Ouija board wasn't even singed. We still have it in the original box, which also didn't get singed. This was 23 years ago, and none of us have played with it since. It scares all of us. In high school, I had a very close circle of friends. We'd play all the time with a homemade Ouija board. We'd start off by asking if anyone was there and asking their name. There was quite a variety of people that came through. One of them moved the planchette so slowly it inched across the board at a snail's pace. Then another would come and it would move so fast you could barely keep your fingers on it. Then there was one spirit whom we liked the most. He called himself Ulner. We'd always ask for him because he was the easiest one to deal with. But one night we were at my friend's apartment looking for someone new to talk to, and we tapped into a girl named Gail. Gail was funny, and we were so into talking to her that we lost track of time, and we suddenly realized, Holy crap, we're late. We gotta go. So we packed up and ran out without saying a proper goodbye like you're supposed to. We ran to the elevator and pushed the button for the lobby. It went down to the lobby, but the doors never opened. Then it took us up to the top floor of the building, but again, the doors wouldn't open. Finally, it went back down to the lobby and the doors did open, so we got out and went home, without giving it any thought at all. About a week later, we were talking to Ulner again, and we asked him if he knew Gail. He said he did. We asked what she'd been up to, and he said... She'd been playing in the elevator. As nine-year-old kids, my friends and I played with the Ouija board during a slumber party. The five of us waited with bated breath, hoping to hear the answers to our deepest, most important life questions. But the Ouija board's replies to us all were surprisingly cruel. We eventually figured out that it was our friend Betsy who was moving the planchette and giving us those mean responses. She deserved everything that we did to her later that night, during stiff as a board, light as a feather. Bitch. I used a Ouija board in middle school. One night, a couple of us were staying over at a friend's house when his parents were gone, and we pulled out the Ouija board. We turned off all the lights and lit a bunch of candles and placed them all around the room. We were just joking around, asking stupid questions, and nothing was happening. Finally, we decided to give it a serious try and said, Are there any spirits in the room? As soon as we said that, all 15 candles went out at the same time. There was no breeze and all the windows were shut, but they all just went out. Of course we were terrified and ran around turning all the lights on in the house. I'm sure there was a rational explanation for what happened, but try telling that to a scared 12-year-old kid. A friend of mine had a Ouija board when we were young, but I thought she was the one moving the planchette so I asked a question that I knew she didn't have the answer to. I tried contacting my dead uncle and asked him to spell out his wife's name. Without any hesitation at all, the planchette spelled out X-I-O-M-A-R-A, -A, his wife's name. Now there is no way my friend could have known that, never mind knowing how to spell it. It made me a believer. I celebrated my 12th birthday at a bowling alley. One of the gifts I got was a Ouija board. 
Now, I went to a Catholic school, and all the girls at the party were from my class. So this was a pretty risque gift coming from that crowd, now that I think about it. My mom tried to hide the look of displeasure when I opened it, and as soon as we walked out of the bowling alley, she took the board and threw it in the dumpster. I was pretty annoyed that she did that, but she said that the Ouija board was a tool for the devil, and it would not be coming into our home. I thought she was being ridiculous at the time, but I soon found out she was right. Every day I would go to my friend's house after school, the one who gave me the Ouija board. She lived close by and both my parents worked late, so I would hang out at her house till they got home. I told her about my mom throwing the board into the dumpster, and she suggested that we ride our bikes over to the bowling alley and see if it was still there. Well, it was and we took it back to her house and started playing with it. At first, I thought it was so stupid. Obviously, we were the ones moving the planchette around. We were asking dumb questions like, Does so-and-so like me? Which new kid on the block am I going to marry? Yeah, I'm that old. Will I pass that test? And so on. Well, at least we got a few laughs out of it. Then one afternoon, we asked if anyone wanted to contact us. We'd never done that before. Well, some girl named Lily came through. We asked how old she was, and she said nine, and that she used to live in the house next door to this one. She said she was born in 1950, the same year that my mom and my friend's mom were born. We didn't think any of this was real, but every time we used the board after that, Lily came through. One day we asked how she died, and she said that she'd drowned in her backyard. Well, now we were sure that this was complete bullshit. We knew the houses on either side and neither had a pool, and there were no lakes or bodies of water nearby anywhere. So after that, we kind of got bored with Lily and went back to asking stupid questions about what boys liked us. But Lily did not like that. The next words that were spelled out were, don't ignore me. And that was followed by a loud banging noise on the wall right next to us. It freaked us out so badly that we packed up the board and put it away. The next day, my friend didn't show up at school. When she came back a few days later, she passed me a note in class that said we had to talk about Lily. At recess, she told me about all the weird things that were happening at her house. The cat was acting weird. He'd hiss at something that no one could see, then slowly back away as if someone were walking towards him. And her stuffed teddy bear that she'd had her whole life kept turning up in weird places in the house. She swore that she hadn't just put it down and forgotten. To test that theory, she put the bear on top of the china cabinet. It was so high up she had to stand on a chair to put it there. She did that to make sure that there was no mistaking where she left the bear. When it was time to go to bed that night, she walked into her room and lo and behold, the bear was sitting on her bed. Scared, she ran into her mom's room and said that the house was haunted and told her about the bear. Her mom reassured her that the house was not haunted She'd lived in that house her entire life. She grew up in that house and her parents left it to her. She said that stuffed bear shouldn't be scary either because it was given to her as a kid by a friend of hers. And not just any friend, but her very best friend. She questioned her mom because she'd never heard that story about the bear before. She said her best friend lived next door when they were growing up. They were very close and played together every day. The girl gave the bear to her on her ninth birthday, and she kept it to give to her own daughter in remembrance of her friend, because she died shortly after giving it to her. Her friend's name was Lily, and she drowned. At that time, there was a pool next door, but after Lily drowned, her parents had it filled in. She said she always felt guilty because right before she died, she and Lily had a fight and they stopped playing together. Lily came to her door right before she drowned, trying to make up. She asked her to please come and play in the pool, but my friend's mom refused to answer the door. 
The last words that Lily said before she left were, Don't ignore me. She always felt guilty because she thought maybe if she had been there, Lily wouldn't have drowned. Well, my friend was thoroughly freaked out, and she told her mom what happened with the Ouija board. They decided the best thing was to get rid of it, but the strange activity continued after it was gone. We told a nun at school about the whole thing, and she said it probably wasn't Lily, but a demon pretending to be Lily to gain access to the home. She told us to have a priest come over and bless the house. He did, but unfortunately, the activity actually got worse. It became unbearable to live there anymore, and my friend and her mom ended up moving to another state. I sometimes pass that house today when I visit my parents, and I wonder if Lily is still there. Well, that's my story. Take it for what it's worth. But I agree with people who say, stay away from the Ouija board. Even if you think they're fake, why take the chance? One time when I was younger, my older brother and I were playing with the Ouija board, but all it would spell out was, Mama. Later that night, my brother asked my mom if she had ever played with the Ouija board, and she said yeah, once, but all it spelled out was Mama. Then a few years later, I was really bored and downloaded a ghost detecting app on my iPod. I was really into ghost adventures at the time and the very first thing the app said was Mama. I was 13 years old and staying overnight at a friend's house. She was somehow able to get the Ouija board past her super religious mom, and after her parents went to bed, we used it. We asked the board some typical 13-year-old girl questions, but nothing happened, so we went to bed. But that night, her mom's new kitten started acting weird. He was wailing and running headfirst into walls over and over again. We woke up and found him sitting in the middle of the kitchen, twitching and staring off into space. They took it to the vet, who said he thought he had a neurological disorder, and put him down. But to this day, my friend and I are convinced that kitten was possessed. This happened when I was 12 or 13 years old, on a hot summer night in Moreau, Louisiana. A group of my friends were outside underneath the streetlight. We'd been talking about my friend Joey's 22-year-old sister. She claimed to be able to contact spirits with the Ouija board. Now, her Ouija board wasn't one you could buy at the local toy store. She got it from her aunt, who was into voodoo, and she bought it from a store in the French Quarter a place well known for its connection to the dark arts. We used to watch when she'd take the board out, but we were all very skeptical that she was actually speaking to the dead. We told ourselves that his sister was the one moving the planchette herself, and it wasn't real. But we all still wanted to try it out ourselves. I'd never actually touched the board before, because even though I was skeptical, I figured, why take chances? Besides, if things got bad, I could always walk away if I was just a bystander. So, Joey snuck into the house and brought the board outside under the streetlight. We all just stood there looking at it. No one wanted to touch it. But we couldn't chicken out now, so we decided that we would do rock, paper, scissors until two people were left and they would play while the rest of us watched. Finally, only two remained of the eight or so kids that were there. Joey actually volunteered, but Jamie was the one who lost at rock, paper, scissors, and I could tell she was already having second thoughts about going through with it. But on they went, placing their fingers on the planchette exactly how we had seen Joey's sister do it before. For several minutes, nothing happened. The kids started saying that they knew it was fake and that his sister must have been moving it herself the whole time. But then the planchette started to move. It was looping around in a figure eight pattern. We all backed up a few inches, scared. Of course, we all accused Joey of moving it, but he swore it wasn't him. 
so then we thought it was Jamie. But she was clearly frightened. Her face had gone pale and I really thought she might faint. After about a minute of this, one kid said to ask the spirit some questions. So we asked some very generic yes or no questions. The board would answer right away, then go right back to that constant figure eight looping action again. This went on for about five minutes until I asked the spirit its name. The spirit claimed to be Lauren, a 16-year-old girl that had drowned in the Mississippi River, which was only 12 blocks from where we lived. So this smart-ass kid named Ryan, who was the oldest among us at 14 years of age, decided to ask Lauren if she was hot. We all laughed, but soon stopped, as the planchette shot over to the word no, then slowly spelled out the word cold. At that very moment, a cold breeze cut through the hot summer air, and it wasn't like any other cold breeze I've ever experienced before. It almost felt like the air had died, if that makes any sense. Everyone there fell silent, for what seemed like forever, before another girl asked if Lauren was still there with us. As the planchette went over to yes, Jamie got scared and pulled her hand away, leaving only Joey touching it. But it never stopped moving. It kept going round and round in a figure eight loop, waiting for the next question. Jamie said she couldn't take it anymore and wanted to go home. She started to walk to her house, but Ryan convinced her and everyone else there to stay. So, back to the board we all went, as Joey sat there with his fingers on the planchette that kept spinning round and round. Apparently, when Jamie tried to leave, it angered the spirit, and the planchette was spinning faster than ever. Things were getting incredibly tense, and I felt like something bad was going to happen. But Ryan, he was still completely skeptical, and he decided to mess with Lauren some more. He was being very disrespectful, and he thought it would be funny to ask her a bunch of sexual questions. And that caused the planchette to spin even faster. Joey told Ryan to stop being stupid, because he couldn't hold on to the planchette if it went any faster. But Ryan said that he knew it was Joey moving the pointer in the first place, and that he didn't care about angering some, quote, dumbass spirit. He then yelled at the board and said, If you're really here, then show yourself. Well, Lauren decided to show us that she was truly there. That same cold breeze came back, but that wasn't the only thing. As we sat there under the streetlight, every other streetlight all the way up and down the street in both directions went out at the same time. We just looked at each other for a second until we fully realized what had just happened. Then, we all ran. I never ran faster than I did that night. I remember hearing the girls screaming and the boys yelling, but I never looked back for any of them. I didn't even see to it that the girls got home safely. All I could think of was getting myself home safely. I didn't even bother to look back to see if anyone stuck around. The next day I found out that nobody stuck around. They all ran, even that instigator, Ryan. Joey left the Ouija board under the streetlight he was so scared. It was still there the next morning. That night when the streetlights came on, they all worked perfectly. Nothing was wrong. We all decided that if we just didn't talk about it, we could forget it, as if it never happened, and go on with our lives. But I'm sure it stuck with the others, just like it stuck with me. We all got into a lot of trouble with Joey's sister when she found out that we used her Ouija board. She told us that we were all far too young and weak to be dealing with these spirits, and that we could have gotten hurt. She said the next time, we should wait for her. But for me, there will never be a next time. I'm not going near one of those things again. My late mother was a no-nonsense woman, and she wasn't exactly known for her sense of humor. She certainly wasn't one to tell tall tales, so I have no reason to doubt her word when it comes to this story. My mother was a divorcee when she met my father, and it was she who divorced her husband, Frank, not the other way around. 
This was in the 1930s. Frank was a bookie, and he was often out late at night taking bets all around town. One night when my mother was left home alone yet again, she decided to go across the street to visit a neighbor of hers. The two talked for a while, then for fun, the woman brought out a Ouija board. Mom didn't know what to ask, so she decided to test the board and ask a question that she knew the answer to already. She asked where her husband Frank was, knowing full well that he was working. However, the board replied that he wasn't working. He was at a local dance hall. Well, Mom was shocked, and she asked more questions. What's he doing there? Who's he with? The board told her that he was there with another woman, and that they had been having an affair for quite some time. My mother, not one to sit back and do nothing, grabbed her coat and dashed off to the dance hall, hoping, of course, that the board was not telling her the truth. However, it had been telling her the truth. Mom found Frank and his girlfriend and confronted them. I can only imagine the scene that she must have created. Mom's voice, when raised, could compete with any jet engine for loudness. She immediately filed for divorce. From then on, she always blamed the Ouija board for destroying her marriage. My mother had an experience with the Ouija board when she was a young woman. She had a couple of friends over, and they were playing with the Ouija board one night. When they were done, her friends left, and Mom went about cleaning up the apartment. But once alone, Mom wanted to keep playing the Ouija board. People, remember this. The Ouija board is not your personal magic eight ball. It's a tool that can open up a portal to the other side. And who knows what could come through? My mother's spiritual guide is her late grandmother. She's most likely where I get my psychic gifts. Anyway, Mom decided to ask another question. But when she put her fingers on the planchette, it moved of its own accord. It spelled out, You need to call. And then it pointed out a local phone number. Well, Mom wasn't about to dial a number that she didn't recognize, especially not at that time of night. But when she placed her fingers back on the planchette for a second time, it once again spelled out, I said, you need to call, and it repeated that same number. At that point, Mom thought she'd better call. It turned out to be the unlisted home phone number of a local spiritualist, the Reverend Marnie Koski. The woman that answered was very annoyed. She said, If you want an appointment with the Reverend, you'll have to call the church in the morning. How did you get this number? By that time, the Reverend had picked up the extension herself, and she asked my mom who she was and how she got the number. Mom told her the whole story. After hearing the story, the Reverend Koski told my mother that her grandmother wanted her to get rid of that Ouija board and never touch another one again. She told her that her grandmother had to cross over the veil to protect her while she was using the board that evening, and that she, quote, was far too busy on the other side to have to come back and deal with this nonsense ever again, so she needed to just stop messing with the Ouija board. Then the Reverend gave my mother instructions on how to get rid of it. She was told to break it into seven pieces and either throw it away or bury it far from home. A lot of people think that fire is the best way to get rid of it or neutralize it, but that's wrong. Fire actually releases the energy, and it can cause mayhem in your life. When it comes to Ouija boards, make good choices, people. This is a long story, but it's 100% true. In the summer of 2019, I was 19 years old. I had a lot of stuff happen that caused me to be very depressed. My boyfriend broke up with me without telling me why, and shortly after, I was assaulted by a so-called friend. I was at a point in my life where I didn't care about anything any longer. So when my friend Lily asked me if I wanted to play Ouija board with her, I said, hell yeah not caring a bit about the possible consequences. 
Since neither of us owned a board, we went to our local Books A Million store to buy one. Lily instantly started having doubts about whether we should mess with this stuff or not. We're both Christian, and we were taught that Ouija boards were a big no-no. However, I told her that everything would be fine, and if it made her more comfortable, we could buy some protective incense and burn it before we played. Well, this did make her feel better, so we purchased the board. The main reason she wanted to use the board was to contact her recently deceased grandmother. I did warn her that if her grandmother was in heaven, she most likely wouldn't come through. But I supported my friend, so I agreed to at least try to contact her grandmother. As for my motive to use the board, ever since I was a kid, I always felt that something wanted to talk to me from the other side. So, being the depressed girl that I was at the time, I was like, bring it on, demons, bring it on. I had been having very vivid dreams where, in every single one of them, I was assaulted by demons, and I would end up being the mother of the Antichrist. I didn't then, and I still don't now, take those dreams very seriously at all. But Lily was intrigued, and she wanted to see if a spirit would come through and explain the dreams to me. So we went home, and no one else was around, just us and the board. I could tell that Lily was nervous, and a small part of me was as well, but I refused to show it. We both decided that I would be the person to ask the questions, so I sat down and opened the board. I asked, Are there any spirits that would like to speak to us today? There was nothing. The planchette didn't move, and everything was silent. I asked that same question four or five times before there was any movement at all. As soon as the planchette moved to yes, I asked the spirit what its name was. It spelled out something nonsensical that I can't even remember. And then it claimed to be a little girl, a cousin of mine that died in a house fire. Now, I knew I didn't have any cousins that died in a house fire, but I played along anyway. At some point, the spirit started making a figure eight all across the board and pointing out various numbers, so I just said goodbye and closed the session. But that wasn't the last time that we used the board. That same alleged little girl kept trying to contact us repeatedly. We both tried to figure out what that thing wanted from us. But before we knew it, the little girl morphed into a male demon named Vovo. Based on my readings about Ouija boards, I knew it very well could have been Zozo. However, he swore up and down that he wasn't Zozo, but he said that Zozo was indeed in the room with us. According to him, Zozo wanted to harm us, but Vovo wanted to protect me. Not Lily, though. Just me, which I found really weird. Vovo told us he was always present in the dreams that I'd been having. He claimed that he was destined to be the father of the Antichrist and me the mother. He also told me that he was deeply in love with me. I thought that was a bunch of crap, but Lily got excited and began asking more questions. But every time she would ask something, the planchette always moved to no, no matter what the question was. Eventually, she realized that he only wanted to talk to me. I agreed, and I continued asking questions. Apparently, there's this whole plan in hell where I'm going to be the mother of the Antichrist. Vovo was a high-ranking demon, and according to him, his rank is right below Lucifer. But right after telling me this, the planchette shot over to goodbye, and all communication ceased. Lily and I agreed to try to contact her grandmother one more time. But of course, the only one that came through was Vovo. He said he'd reveal too much to me the last time, and that Lucifer wasn't happy about it. But at the same time, Lucifer did want me to have some of the information that he gave me. I was still completely skeptical at that point, so I just shrugged it off and said, Whatever. All of a sudden... I could feel something lightly brush against my lips and cheek. I screamed and closed out the session. Then both of us lit the incense and walked around the house saying the Lord's Prayer. Fast forward a few months and I was at my friend Kat's house with another friend, Ashley. 
My father had found and burned the Ouija board, but we all wanted to play. So we went back to the books a million and bought another board. Lo and behold, after we started playing, Vovo was the only one who had come through. He told my friends he only wanted to talk to me, not them. He claimed to have been watching me since I was five years old, and that everything that was planned is supposed to go down in 2023. This scared my friends, so we stopped using the board for the day. You would think I'd have learned my lesson by then. But, a couple of months later, I was at another friend's house, Amanda, and I was getting high with her and her friends. This was without a doubt the dumbest decision I've ever made, but we decided to use the Ouija board while we were high. I was so out of it I don't remember any of it, to be honest. But according to Amanda, Vovo kept refusing to talk to anyone and just kept spelling my name out over and over. But I was too high to do or say anything. After about an hour, they gave up and put me to bed. Now, you may wonder if I'm worried about this prediction. No, I'm not. Because despite my playing with the Ouija board, I still have a very strong Christian faith, and I don't believe the Lord would allow this to happen. But I guess I'll just have to wait and see what happens in 2023. This happened to my cousin. He, his best friend, my other cousin, and my uncle were all using a Ouija board in their basement one night. Before they began, they took a large porcelain doll out of the room because it was creeping them out, and they put it in the adjacent laundry room face down on a pile of towels. As they played, they wrote down the answers to the questions they asked, but none of the replies made any sense. During the game, my cousin took a bathroom break, and while he was gone, the others decided to test the board by asking it. Who just left the room? The planchette just started pointing to a random series of numbers. When my cousin came back, his brother said that the board wasn't working, so they were going to stop playing and put it away. They told him that they had asked the board who left the room when he went to the bathroom, and they showed him the strange reply. My cousin said, Dude, that's my social security number. Well, suddenly they were all interested again, and they began asking questions. They asked about their futures, and it told my cousin that he would join the military and die in the Air Force. At that point, they asked the entity to prove itself and show them that it was telling them the truth. It then slowly spelled out the word D-O-L-L. It was then that they remembered that they put the doll in the laundry room. When they opened the door to check on it, the doll was standing upright in front of the door, staring at them. They all freaked and ran out of the house. His best friend buried the Ouija board, and I think he went temporarily insane for a few months, too. Even after that, though, for some reason, my cousin recently joined the Air Force, and he's currently stationed at a base in Europe. When I was in the sixth grade, I was obsessed with ghosts. Now, I never had any reason to believe that my house was haunted. But one day, my eight-year-old brother came home from school, claiming that he, quote, found ten dollars out of nowhere. So I asked him where the money really came from. The story he gave me was that a young girl about the age of seven had followed him onto the school bus that afternoon. He said he never met the girl or even seen her around school, but she decided to sit right in front of him. After riding the bus for a little while, she started talking to him, but according to my brother, nobody else could see or hear this little girl but him. He said the others were giving him weird looks. She handed him a $10 bill with a note, then got off the bus at the next stop. Of course I assumed he was lying and laughed at him. I asked him to show me the note if it was true and he promptly showed me a tiny piece of paper. A shiver ran down my spine because the note was not in his handwriting. It read, I'll help you, but only this time. We believe that was in response to the fact that my brother had been begging my parents for a Zelda charm bracelet for months, and they refused to buy it for him. Now that he had a $10 bill, he could just buy it for himself. 
Of course, me being me, I was extremely intrigued by this, even if it did seem absurd. I suggested we put together a makeshift Ouija board and see if we could contact someone. So we wrote the alphabet and numbers on a piece of paper and grabbed a necklace to use as a planchette. After asking a few questions, the necklace began to move and shake. Either my brother was really good at tricking me by slowly sliding the necklace across the board, or it really did contact something paranormal. The spirit said her name was Kate, and after asking some dumb questions like, Do you watch me playing video games? And getting the reply of yes, my brother and I decided to stop for the night because we were kind of getting creeped out. But we never did say goodbye to the board before ending, like you're supposed to. After that, though, playing with the board became a daily thing. We thought we'd made a friend and truly believed that someone named Kate was talking to us. We decided to go a step further and try to record something. So we both got our tablets, placed them in front of the TV, and hit record. The first thing I asked was, if someone is here, move something in the room for us. Nothing happened. I thought, okay, maybe the ghost is shy today. We decided to ask the same question, but this time tell it that we would leave the room to give it time to move something. So we went downstairs for five minutes. And when we went back upstairs, both of our tablets had fallen to the floor and stopped recording. Maybe a coincidence? I mean, it's easy for things to fall over if you're not careful. So we just brushed it off. In December of that year, though, things got really weird. I started hearing voices in my head claiming that they were the ghost I was talking to while playing Ouija board. I was so scared I'd sleep with a Bible, and I'm not even religious. Eventually, I broke down and told my mom that there was a ghost telling me scary things in my head. I won't go into detail of what it said, because some of it was pretty graphic. She and my father argued for quite a while about whether or not I was schizophrenic, and if they should bring me to a therapist or not. So, out of fear of being labeled crazy, I never told them about hearing the voices again but I'd often space out while having conversations with this thing. Eventually, I forgot about it all, and I no longer heard the voice. I'll never know for sure what it was. Was I truly insane, or were they just intrusive thoughts? Either way, I'm glad they stopped. Nothing necessarily paranormal has happened to me since, besides, well, my TV turning on and off at random times in the night or feeling an unseen force push or pull me. But I just put that down to my imagination playing tricks on me. I still do have this overwhelming feeling, though, that ever since I played with the Ouija board, there's a spirit attached to me. Nothing bad, just a looming presence. I have a friend named Andrew who practiced Satanism in high school. He would actually invite demons to possess him through the Ouija board. He and some of his crazy friends would go down into the sewers and paint pentagrams and hold seances down there. He said at first, not much happened. But then one night, he and a friend went to the sewer with a Ouija board to summon whatever demon they could. They sat opposite one another with a board between them, and at one point in the game, they asked the demon, Will you take us? And before they even finished the question, his friend was literally dragged backwards about six feet, like something straight out of a horror movie. But instead of getting scared, they thought it was cool. So his friend scooted back to the board, and they requested that the spirit do it again. Then suddenly, a huge black dog appeared, in the sewer. It just stood there watching and growling at them. If they tried to approach the dog, he would bark violently and stand his ground like he was guarding something. Well, that finally freaked them out and they hightailed it out of there. Andrew told me that he thinks he opened a portal of some sort, allowing the demon to come through, and the dog was protecting that portal. Obviously, none of this is concrete proof, but I've heard so many creepy stories involving Ouija boards from so many different types of people, 
many of whom didn't even believe in them before their own experience, so it's hard for me to completely discredit them. I'm pretty sure I'll never play with one, though. Last year I stayed for a couple of weeks at a church parish. A priest there had a case pertaining to the Ouija board. A young man had come to his office a few months before and told Father that he had been to three other churches and they either turned him down or didn't believe him, so he came to him because he was a Catholic priest. The story goes that the boy's grandmother had gotten him a Ouija board about a year prior. He played with it and made contact with something. He began to feel the need to use the Ouija board every single day, more and more. It got to the point that if he wasn't using it multiple times a day, he became extremely ill. He knew he needed help, but it was difficult to find because no one believed him, not even his parents. The priest went to the boy's home, trying to explain to his parents that the supernatural is in fact a real thing, and their son needed help. After speaking to them, he convinced the parents to allow him to bless the home and take the Ouija board away. When he got back to the parish, he attempted to burn the board. However, it simply wouldn't burn. Even after pouring gasoline on it, it wouldn't ignite. He then tried to tear the board up, but he couldn't even make a scratch on it. He found all of this very disturbing because it was just a cheap board something you'd buy in a toy store. It should have been easily destroyed. He then performed a minor exorcism on it, blessed the board, and then tried to burn it again. This time, the board went up in flames in a matter of seconds. Anybody who thinks these boards are just a game are sadly mistaken. When I was about 12 or 13 years old, I spent the night at a friend's house when his parents were gone. He, his younger sister, and I were goofing around with the Ouija board, but we weren't getting anything but nonsense replies. We didn't care. We were just goofing around, having fun, trying to scare ourselves. But then we got two messages. The first was, I see you through the window. And the second, I see you through its eyes. We were in the basement and there was a small window that looked out onto the yard in the driveway. We asked where it was and it said, Under the car. We somehow found the nerve to go outside with a flashlight and peer under the car, where we saw a huge black stray cat staring back at us. We all ran back inside, terrified, and at that exact moment, the power failed and the lights in the entire house all went out at the same time. We huddled together, absolutely horrified. A few minutes later, the power came back on, and we sat up until dawn completely terrified, and we never played with the Ouija board again. My stepfather is the kind of man who doesn't lie, ever which is why I believe the story of a Ouija board experience he had when he was younger. He had friends over, and they wanted to play the Ouija board. After a while, they made contact with something that said it was a demon. His friends were asking the questions, but the thing focused on him. The demon told my stepdad that it would visit him later that night, after midnight. Well, they got thoroughly freaked out and put the board away. My stepdad fell asleep, and he was awakened precisely at midnight. Now the demon had told him its name, but my stepdad refused to tell me. He's afraid to speak its name even to this day. Anyway, he said this thing woke him up, and that it was just sitting there, grinning at him. The demon told him that the first child he would have would die. Then it disappeared. After that, my stepdad tried to get rid of the board. He threw it out in the trash, but that didn't work. He said a few days later, a little boy that he had never seen before showed up to his door with the Ouija board. He handed it to my stepdad and said, This is yours. And left. 
completely afraid now. My stepdad tried to burn it, but it simply wouldn't catch fire. The fire kept dying out no matter what he did. So he dug a very deep hole in the backyard and put the board in it, placed a Bible on top, and buried it. He's not seen the board since. As for what the demon predicted, it did come true. His first wife miscarried her first pregnancy three months in. I wholeheartedly believe my stepdad's story, and that's why I have never messed with the Ouija board, and never will. I'm going to start out by saying that I'm not convinced that Ouija boards are real. Anything that requires human interaction has a lot of room for error. But having said that, I had an experience with one, and I've come to realize that it may not even matter if the message comes from the other side or simply from our own subconscious. This happened about a year ago. I was in a pretty dark place emotionally, and I had been for a couple of months. I was thinking a lot about not wanting to be alive anymore. Some friends and I were hanging out. They'd used a Ouija board a few times before and thought it was pretty cool. Honestly, I didn't really believe their stories, since I had used it a couple of times when I was younger and nothing happened. Still, they wanted to play, so I joined in. We asked if anyone was there, and it said yes. Then we asked if it wanted to speak to anyone in particular. It immediately spelled out my name. What surprised me was how quickly and forcefully the planchette moved to spell my name. When we asked what it wanted to tell me, it spelled out, Don't Die. I won't give you a play-by-play -play of the rest of the conversation, but it basically told me that I was a good person and that things would get better. It really freaked my friends out and led to some pretty awkward questions from them about my emotional state. This was a positive experience, and regardless of what caused it, I'm happy to have had it because it was exactly what I needed to hear at the time. True story. It was Halloween 1994, and I had dropped some acid around 5 p.m. About half an hour later, I told a girl that I had a crush on that I was tripping. She got a mischievous look in her eye and said, Come on over to my dorm room, and we'll break out the Ouija board. Well, I'm game for anything, so I went. Her roommate was there, and we cracked open some beers, then got out the Ouija board. I caught them giving each other looks like they were saying, We're going to have fun with this. I got the sense that they were going to try to prank me because I was on acid. Fair enough. We started playing, but at first, nothing happened until she turned the questions on me. Both of our hands were on the planchette, and she asked the alleged spirit, Who do you want to speak to? I could feel her guiding the thing to spell out my name. Then she asked, What do you want to tell him? And she spelled out, Soul. I knew what was up, but I was happy to play along. She was cute and it was Halloween, so who cares? Then she asked the final question. Who are you? And she moved the thing to six, then another six, and finally a third six. But as soon as the planchette stopped on the last six, there was blood. Hers. Her own blood started pouring from her nose for no reason. Not a drop or a trickle, but like a hemorrhage. And out of just one nostril, too. It began as one little drop leaving a perfect line down her upper lip. Then it was like someone turned on a faucet and the blood just came gushing out of her nose. Now remember, I was on acid, so this was like heaven to me. I thought it was hilarious and started laughing uncontrollably. This chick and her roommate were screaming and crying while I was laughing, and they were looking at me like I was the devil himself. They really didn't speak to me again after that. Totally worth it.
Last summer, a friend and I played with the Ouija board. We bought the board, looked up the rules online, lit a candle, and followed the instructions. At first, nothing happened. Then the planchette started going really slowly, but not making any sense. We looked up what to do if nothing was working, and it said to take a break and come back later. So we did. After that, as soon as we would start playing again, the board would answer our questions. The first thing I found alarming is that it told us there were 13 entities in the room with us. I asked how many of them were evil, and it said, all but one. Then it spelled out my last name. I kept asking who or what the spirits were, but all the board would do was tell me that the bad spirits liked me. When I asked why, it spelled out, You bleed. Now, I'm a former self-harmer, and I used to cut myself and have suicidal thoughts. I instinctively knew that it was talking about the fact that these things liked that I harm myself, and I found that terrifying. So we said goodbye and took another break. But when we came back later, I asked if there was anything I should know, and the board told me a secret that my friend was keeping from me. She desperately tried to keep it from telling me, but the harder she tried, the more embarrassing details it revealed to me. We stopped then because neither one of us could handle this anymore. We threw the board away in a McDonald's dumpster and tried not to think about it anymore. But two weeks later, to our complete shock, the board appeared out of nowhere in the back seat of her mother's car. We have no idea how it got there. Her mom didn't even know that we had played with the Ouija board because we would have gotten into a lot of trouble had she known. After the board came back, I felt constantly watched, and I sensed a dark presence in my house. There were unexplained noises all the time, too. One time, my phone glitched out, and I heard a distorted voice on the other end. Then the phone shut itself off. Another time, I heard a loud bang next to my bed in the night. It sounded like somebody was punching the wall as hard as they could. I heard noises in the cupboard and all the cups and bowls had been flipped over completely. All of this eventually died down, although once in a while, I still sense a heavy presence in the house to this day. Sometimes, whatever you contact with a Ouija board can stay with you. One time I had something attached to me, I would see things, then hear knocking and scratching inside of my wall, and my bed would shake. I left myself open before, but I now know how to set up a spiritual protection before I use something like a Ouija board. You have to be very careful when dealing with the spirit world. One time my sister and her friend used a Ouija board, and it said that her friend would try to kill herself, and a few weeks later, she did try to kill herself by drinking bleach. And my mother used a Ouija board many years ago when she was pregnant. She asked if the baby would be a boy or a girl. The planchette just kept spinning around in a circle faster and faster, and it wouldn't give her an answer. And my mom miscarried. I don't know exactly what we connect to through these boards, but they can be very dark and dangerous. A few years ago in high school, my friends and I decided to play with the Ouija board. We'd done it before, with varying degrees of success. This time, a female friend and I were the two chosen to have our fingers on the planchette. This thing was moving crazy fast, faster than I'd ever seen it move before. It seemed to be getting quite agitated by some of the guys in our group who were joking around, not taking it seriously. They kept laughing and asking for a sign that somebody was there, and the board was pretty much telling them to shut up and stop talking. I told them, Guys, seriously, stop being rude. This is starting to kind of freak me out now. Because I was getting nervous, one of the guys took my place. He was a bit more serious than the others. 
Almost immediately, the board started spelling out, Don't open the door. Well, we were in the basement, and there was only one door, so we all kind of looked over at it, nervously. At that point, I was getting anxious, so I hid my face. And as soon as I did that, the board spelled out, Don't hide from me. Everyone was freaking out. The guy who had his hands on the planchette literally started to cry. He wanted to quit, but the rule of the game is you can't take your hands off the planchette until it says goodbye. It took about 10 minutes of asking dumb questions before the planchette finally slid over to goodbye. Some of the guys speculated that the message about the door meant don't open the door to the spirit world. Their reasoning is that we were told to never ask for a sign or else it lets the spirit roam free outside of the board. And they had been asking for a sign earlier, so that speculation made some sense. I bet they never tried that again. I used a Ouija board as a kid. I'd always had an interest in the supernatural so my older sister gave me one for Christmas. When I first started using it, nothing really happened, so I thought maybe it just didn't work. But one day my best friend came over, and we were determined to get that board to work. We turned off all the lights and put blankets on the windows. I don't know why, but that time it worked. The planchette started slowly moving around the board. We both thought the other one was pushing it, though. So we took turns asking the board questions that the other person wouldn't know the answer to, like my grandma's birthday or my mother's middle name. After getting correct answers to both, we realized there may be something to this. After that, whenever my best friend came over, we'd get out the Ouija board and ask questions like, how many guys have crushes on us? Just stupid meaningless things. It seemed to go much faster and get more accurate every time we used it. There also seemed to be different entities speaking to us at different times. There was a difficult one that refused to spell out anything in the English language. There was a friendly one who talked to us easily. And then there was a spirit that called himself Brandon. I never learned the specifics on who or what he was or how he came to be there, but he was the one that came through the most often. Once I had the guts to ask him how he died, the response was, Never alive. Okay. I had certain friends that he didn't like, and he would spell out curse words directed towards them when they played the Ouija board with me. On at least two occasions, the friends that he didn't like ended up being backstabbers later on. I guess playing so often and having him, in my mind, warn me about bad friends gave me a false sense of security that this was all harmless. Fast forward to my high school years. I was having a sleepover at my house with one of the friends that Brandon didn't like, Deanna. We woke up kind of early the next morning to find the house empty. Neither my mom nor my brother were around. Now, this wasn't a totally weird thing because my brother was often gone and my mom always had errands to run. It was a pretty windy day, so when we woke up, the power was out and the phone was dead. This was before cell phones, so we had no way of contacting my mother to see where she was or ask her what was going on. The only thing working was the battery-operated clock. We decided to play with the Ouija board since there was nothing else to do with the electricity off. We asked maybe five to ten questions like, Why is the power off? Answer, the weather. Where did my mom go? Answer, the store. What time will she be back? Now this response was oddly specific. It spelled out, two, three, four. Then Deanna asked a question about herself, and the board spelled out, B. I-T-C-H. I stuck up for my friend, and I told Brandon that we weren't going to play anymore if he was going to start that again. So I put the board away. As soon as I put the board away, 
The back door swung open, but nobody walked in. I thought my mom was back, so I told Deanna, let's go help her bring in the groceries. I happened to glance over at the clock, and the exact time was 2.34 p.m. Weird, but cool. I told Deanna, look, it's the exact time the board said. We both kind of smiled and went outside. But when we got out there, we realized there was no car. In fact, there was nobody out there at all. I thought maybe the wind blew the door open, so I closed it and locked the deadbolt. About five minutes later, the back door swung open again. Now it was starting to make me feel a little bit creeped out, but I convinced myself that I must not have closed the door all the way or fully turned the lock. So I had Deanna come back there with me to watch me shut and lock the door to make sure I did it right this time. But less than 30 seconds later, it happened again. Now I was scared. There was also a screen door, and both the back door and the screen door were swinging back and forth violently. Then the wind started blowing the papers around that were on the kitchen counter. It was like a scene straight out of The Exorcist. We looked at one another, then ran into the next room to hide under a blanket. It was chaotic and scary, and it seemed to last forever. My family is not very religious, but I've always believed in God, so I started praying the Our Father out loud. After maybe three or four times of saying it, the wind stopped, the door shut, and it stayed shut this time. Deanna and I didn't speak or move for a good two or three minutes, and when we finally did start to move, we tried to find a way to contact my mom and get her home. That's the scariest thing that ever happened to me, and there's no real explanation for any of it. I found out later that my mom was never at the store. She took on an extra shift at work, and my brother was at his friend's house. I really do believe that there's an entity in that house to this very day. It always felt creepy in there after that. The two biggest things that lead me to believe that this really was paranormal is that I locked that door twice with a deadbolt, yet it kept opening. And the fact that something happened at precisely 2.34 p.m., as predicted. My mom didn't come home, but something did. My girlfriend told me about her experience with a Ouija board back in high school in 1986. Her friend Johnny had cystic fibrosis and was in the hospital. She and her friend Shelly would go to visit him a few times a week to keep his spirits up. One night after a visit, they went back to Shelly's and decided to play with the Ouija board. A spirit came through that seemed to know a lot about them that it really shouldn't have known. So after asking some banal questions about boys and other things that teenage girls ask, my girlfriend decided to ask about Johnny and his condition. The board spelled out, 24 June 1987. Johnny, worry no more. Then the planchette went to goodbye. My girlfriend and Shelley were so convinced that this board was telling them the date that he was going to recover that they actually wrote it down, put it in a sealed envelope, and were planning on giving it to him the following year to celebrate. Well, the next year on June 24th, it turned out that indeed, Johnny did not need to worry any longer about his condition, because it was the day he died. One night at college, we were all hanging out at a friend's dorm room, and we decided to play the Ouija board. There were a few of them that had never used it before and were quite skeptical. It was around 11 p.m., and communication with the board was going rather well. Gary, one of the skeptics, kept making fun of the whole thing. But we convinced him to sit down on the floor with us and give it a try. The first question he asked was, is this all a bunch of bull? The planchette moved over to no. So Gary said, Fine, 
prove it's real. The moment he said that, the lights in the room began to flicker, and the fire alarm went off. This freaked us all out. We had to vacate the building to follow fire alarm procedures. After about 20 minutes, the campus security said it was a false alarm and let us all back inside the dorm. When we got back to our friend's room, the Ouija board was gone. None of us took it with us, and the door had been locked. We never saw that Ouija board again. About two or three years ago, my friends were playing Ouija board at my house. One of them had brought it with them. At first, I just watched while the others used it. Then, I decided to join in. We asked the board if there was a spirit present, and it said yes. Then we asked the name, but instead of answering, it just pointed to random letters and numbers that made no sense. Annoyed, I asked again, this time more forcefully and it spelled out B-I-T-C-H. Then the C word. You know, a four-letter word beginning with C and ending in T, if you get my meaning. I'll probably never use a Ouija board again after that. Probably. I was staying at a hotel with some friends in Ontario for a chess tournament. Yeah, geeky, I know. One night, somebody took out a Ouija board. We asked a few questions that I can't remember the answers to, but I'll never forget the answer to one particular question. We asked if any one of us was going to die soon. I know, strange thing to ask, but it spelled out my friend's name and gave a date that was 12 months in the future. And a year later, my friend did die of cancer, and he only found out about the diagnosis six months before he died. So none of us could have known that at the time we were playing with the Ouija board. To this day, I'm still curious about Ouija boards and how it knew that my friend was going to die. But I'll be damned if I ever touch one of them again. When my brother and I were very little, my mom took out a Ouija board one day and asked if we wanted to play. A spirit did come through, and at first it was fun. We were just asking stupid questions, until my mom said, Let's get serious and really try to contact someone. Now here is where it gets a little weird. Mom's friend George had recently gone missing. He'd been gone for about a month, and nobody knew where he was. When we asked the name of the spirit we were talking to, the board spelled out George's name. We then asked if it was the same George that went missing, and the pointer went over to yes. My mom became visibly upset, and she asked him where he was. It spelled out, in a lake. At that point we stopped, because we were all getting very upset. Mom tried to make a joke of it for our sake but she was visibly shaken. About two weeks later, they found his body. He'd fallen off a bridge into the lake below and drown. It was kind of hidden away, so they didn't find his body until then. I only played the Ouija board one time, I was 17 years old and at a friend's house with a bunch of other teenagers. One guy said something like, This is all fake. I need proof. He didn't even get to finish the word proof when the lights in the entire house went out. If that was just a coincidence, it's one of the oddest ones I've ever seen. No one else was in the house, and the fuse box was hidden away in the back of a closet. My friend had to call his dad to come home and fix it. He said he had never seen that happen before, that the entire circuit was tripped at the same time.
Not long after my ex-boyfriend lost his friend in a plane crash, we tried to contact her with a Ouija board. Something claiming to be his friend came through, saying that she was scared and alone and desperate for communication. But I just knew this thing was not his friend. So I insisted that we stop immediately because I could feel a dark presence in the corner of the room. As soon as I said the word stop, the planchette started moving on its own, going all over the board so fast it couldn't even spell anything. It was absolutely terrifying. I put the board away in my room and refused to use it again that night. I felt exhausted after that, completely drained, and I had to lie down for a nap. A half hour later, I woke up, and in my mind's eye, I saw that same dark presence standing in the corner of my room. As soon as I saw it, it rushed towards me. I opened my mouth and yelled for my boyfriend to get it off of me. I could actually feel it aggressively trying to possess me. I ran from the house screaming and shaking horribly, vowing never to use a Ouija board again. But the point became moot because one day, it just disappeared out of my room. I never saw it again, and to this day, I have no idea what happened to it. My worst experiences with the Ouija board are pertaining to Zozo. In 1992, my friend got a Ouija board for Christmas. We were both eight years old. I'd never played with a Ouija board before, so we sat down with the board between us when something that we thought was called Oz Oz came through. At first it was fine. We were just asking dumb questions like, will my mom let us stay up late tonight? But then it turned dark. It said it was going to do terrible things to us, things that I won't mention here because they're that dark. And then it said it wanted to kill us both. It really freaked us out, so we stopped playing and said goodbye. Mind you, this was 1992, and we were naive children. There was no internet back then, and our town had no libraries that carried books on the occult, so we had no way of looking up any information. But the name Oz Oz always stuck with us. I went on assuming that my friend was the one pushing the planchette, despite the fact that the things that were said were very out of character for her. She was just a normal eight-year-old girl. How could she know to say such awful things? Fast forward to 2004. I was once again playing the Ouija board, this time with my husband's friend and his wife. The first person to come through was the friend's mother. He thought it was all BS, so he decided to test the board with a question that nobody in the room knew but him. He said, If you're really my mom, what was your favorite drink? The planchette spelled out, Grape Soda. His mother had passed away when he was just 10 years old, so none of us knew her, let alone her favorite drink. So he was convinced enough to carry on a rather lengthy conversation. He got pretty emotional. It was actually kind of sweet. But then the board turned dark. It started spelling out words like afraid. And it got really creepy, saying it was going to kill his wife. Then, Oz Oz was spelled out. And the planchette started moving around erratically, all on its own. We got scared and said goodbye. I'd never done any research about Zozo, and I'm pretty sure they didn't know about it either. It was a good year or so after that incident before I found out that Zozo was the real name and that this was something that a lot of people encounter using the Ouija board. So, unbeknownst to me, I had twice been contacted by a demon. <laughs>